What did you do to your hair, Kim? Well, I colored it. And you know, I trust your opinion. So tell me, what do you think? Well, because you're my friend, I'm gonna have to tell you the truth. You have to trust me. It's not your best look. Oh, well, I kind of thought so, but I really needed a second opinion. Thank you for being honest. That's what friends are for. <laughs> oh, it's Word Bird. <laughs> Edward Birdie. Mm. So tell me what you think of Kim's new hairdo. <laughs> oh, thank you, Word Bird and Word Birdie. See, Kim, it's not so bad. Really? <laughs> well, I guess on the upside, it is colorful. And I guess it would be a boring world if we all look the same. <laughs> hey guys, enough of that. Is there a word this week? <laughs> See, I didn't think it was that bad, but you know. Ooh, the word of the day is trust. Yeah, we were just talking about that. We are going to learn more about trust in today's program. Great. Okay, thanks again, Word Birdie. Word Birdie. <laughs> See you guys. See ya. Hey kids, it's time to pray again. I bet you guys are pros at this by now. I'm so excited that you are talking to God each and every day. I hope you're doing it at different times and at different spots too. So today we're gonna pray and we're gonna talk about how we can trust God and thank God that he's always there for us. So let's pray. God, thank you. Thank you that no matter what, you are always there for us. Thank you that you're there for us in the hard times and in the good times. And God, I thank you that no matter what, you have a plan for us and that we just need to trust in that plan, God. Knowing that you will be with us each and every step of the way. Just like you were with the guys in the fiery furnace, God, I, I know that you're with us each and every day. So thank you for that, God. Help us to trust in you. Help us to know that you are there and that you're gonna get us through whatever we're going through. And thank you for always being there, always listening to us, and always loving us. Thank you, Jesus. Look who's coming, kids. Good morning. I'm Little Red Riding Hood, and I've lost my way. Why, good morning, Red Riding Hood. Uh, my, what large shoulders you have. Ah, uh, yes, while well, I eat my Cheerios. But what big feet you have for a little girl. <laughs> my daddy had big feet. There is a red here, you know. Little Red. What wild and crazy hair you have coming out of your bonnet. Wild hair? Oops. Oh, you aren't Little Red Riding Hood at all, are you? Oh, Professor Know-It-All, you didn't fool us for one minute. Shucks, I was sure I could fool you. Why in the world are you dressed like that, Professor? Well, I have some fascinating information about insects and camouflage and other things insects do to protect themselves. Camels? Who? What? Not camels! I said camouflage! That means that insects disguise themselves so that their predators can't find them or tell what they are. Oh, you mean like a walking stick bug. That is correct. The walking stick bug looks just like a twig or a stick. Because it looks like a part of a tree, it can easily hide from other insects or other creatures or critters that want to eat it. Well, that's cool. What other ways do insects protect themselves? <sighs> Oh uh, well, everyone knows about, um, about the dead leaf butterflies of India. They rest on dead leaves that are the same color as their wings. Did you know that, Professor? Of course I did. I also know... I also know that some caterpillars hit 
took the heads of like a small snake, or they looked like the heads of a small snake. And some large moths spread their wings to look like the face of an owl. This is quite fascinating, Professor. It appears that God has provided the insects with some wonderful ways to protect itself against dangerous predators. Yes, quite. And now I have some fascinating information for you, Professor. Huh, what possibly could you teach me? You know, Professor, you have told us some neat things about bugs and their protection. But did you know that you that we have protection devices also? We most certainly do not. Do you take me to be a fool? Oh, the Bible tells us that we can put on the full armor of God and he will protect us. The armor of God? Surely you just. I haven't got time for this nonsense. Here we go again. Oh, he always seems to take off just as we begin talking about God. What is the armor of God? Do I really need to wear a suit of armor to protect myself? Oh, well, Penny, let me read this portion of the Bible for you. It says right here, be ready. Let the truth be like a belt around your waist and let God's justice protect you like armor. Your desire to tell the good news about peace should be like shoes on your feet. Let your faith be like a shield and you will be able to stop all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Let God's saving power be like a helmet, and for a sword, use God's message that comes from the Spirit. Never stop praying, especially for others. Always pray by the power of the Spirit, and stay alert, and keep praying for God's people. You see, Penny, God loves us and will protect us if we trust in him and use the things he has given us. For example, knowing and believing the Bible, what God says, will help us make the right choices. Well, that is really awesome. It sure gives us a lot to be thankful for, doesn't it? It sure does. It just makes me want to praise God. Why don't we do that right now? That is a great idea. He's the one who makes the sun shine. He's the one that puts the moon in the sky. He's the one who hung the stars one by one. He's the one who makes the birds sing. He's the one who makes your dreams so high. He's the one who makes me smile. Day by day, Jesus, you're my superhero, you're my star, my best friend. Jesus, you're my superhero, you're my star, my best friend. Yeah, 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 better than Spider-Man. Yeah, 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 better than Superman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Batman, yeah, 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 better than anyone, Jesus, you're my superhero, you're my star, my best friend, Jesus, you're my superhero, you're my star, my best friend, Jesus, you're my superhero, you're my star, my best friend, Jesus, you're my superhero. Yeah, 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 better than anyone, Jesus.
Yes, you're my superhero. You're my star, my best friend. Jesus, you're my superhero. You're my star, my best friend. <laughs> Why did the spider buy a car? I don't know, why did the spider buy a car? To take it for a spin. <laughs> hey kids, have you ever had to stand up for someone? Maybe you stood up to a bully because they were picking on someone. Or maybe you told your friends to stop saying bad things behind another friend's back. Well, in today's lesson, we're going to learn about a time when some guys had to stand up for God. King Nebuchadnezzar set up a massive statue for everyone to worship. Do you remember King Nebuchadnezzar from our last lesson? He was a big, proud king that didn't believe in the real God. He built a massive statue of a fake God for everyone to see and worship. He wanted everyone to bow down to him. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused to bow down to the statue. Those three people believed in the real God, and they wouldn't worship the big statue. When the king found out about this, he had them brought to him. He told them they have one more chance to bow down, or else they would be thrown into a fiery furnace. But they refused to bow down and said something very important. Memory verse. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. They weren't afraid because they knew God would protect them. The king threw those three guys into a fiery furnace. The king got so mad at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that he turned up the heat. He turned the furnace up seven times hotter than it was supposed to be and threw them in. The fire was so hot that the guards that threw them in got burned. There's no way that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were going to survive. The king was watching and waiting for them to burn up. But when he looked into the furnace, he saw not three, but four men. He only threw in three guys. So who is this fourth person? Jesus stands with us when we stand for him. Do you want to know who the fourth person was? Well, we aren't entirely sure. It could be an angel, or it could have been God himself. Either way, they didn't burn up because God protected them. So King Nebuchadnezzar had them come out of the fire. Then he realized that the God they served was the real God. So kids, next time you stand up for someone, think of this lesson. When we stand up for God, he'll help us and make us brave. Hey kids and parents, if you want to learn more about King Nebuchadnezzar or courage, check out the links below. Hey, Kim. What is this rock doing up on our weekly kit that we give the kids each week? Well, it's to remind us of our lesson this week. How so? Well, tell me how God is like a rock. Well, he's strong and he's powerful and he lasts forever. That's true, and because he's strong and powerful, he is able to protect us and comfort us. If you have a problem or hurt, you can trust Jesus to be your friend and help you through it. There's no problem bigger than God. It's true. Okay, kids, open up your kit you got this week and take out your rock and take out your marker and print Jesus on your rock to remind you that Jesus is strong and he can help you whenever you need it. Cool. Okay, kids, see you next week. See ya. Supposed to be. Don't be afraid, I will protect you from evil forces of the devil. What are you talking about, Bobo? You know, I heard someone telling the professor that the only way to protect yourself from the evil forces from the devil is to wear a suit of armor. So I, Super Bobo, have come to protect you from the evil forces of the devil. Bobo, I don't think you understand what you thought the professor told you. you. They 
they aren't talking about a costume or armor. They were talking about spiritual things that help protect us. You mean that this costume will help me keep me safe? No, Bobo, it won't. But I am Super Bobo the Great! I am strong and powerful! Well, only God can protect us from the evil plots of the devil. But you said we need an armor! The Bible gives us that as an example we can understand. You see, Bobo, God loves us and will protect us if we trust in God and use the things he has given us for protection. God protects us like a suit of armor protects a knight. So does that mean that if I read my Bible and pray, nothing will ever, will ever happen to me? No, Bobo. Bad things can still happen. But God can always be with you to help you and protect you through. Phew! In that case, I'm going to get out of this crazy suit of armor. It is hot and heavy and uncomfortable. We'll see you later, Bobo. Bye, everyone. Remember, trust God to protect you. Hey, kids. Thanks for joining us. I hope you had as much fun as I did. Don't forget about your weekly challenge. This week, the challenge is to upload a picture of your pet. If you don't have a pet, you can draw a picture of a pet you would like to have. You can get an adult who looks after you to help you with this. See you next week.